Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased that our guest is Shannon Hayden, the Director of the Planning Department for Sheboygan County. Shannon, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Shannon oversees one of 23 very important departments, and today she's going to discuss the roles and responsibilities of the Planning Department. So, Shannon, please start by sharing a little bit about yourself and your background. Thank you. Um, I run the Planning and Resources Department. It's actually kind of got some dual duties. We currently have 13 employees on our table of organization. We do have one vacancy right now, so I supervise 12 staff. We have um, two major divisions within our office, the Planning and Zoning Division and then the Real Property Listing Division, and each of those has their own unique roles and responsibilities in the department. Um, planning and zoning regulates land division, shoreland permits, and septic systems, which is a real glor um, glorified job, I guess. And then real property listing is responsible for making sure that the tax rules are developed so that all the tax bills can go out each year. So that's in a nutshell. One and of the in a <laughs> nutshell, who is Shannon Hayden? I know you were assistant <clears throat> planning director, and I get nothing but good feedback about yourself, but why don't you share with our viewers a little bit about your background and sure. how long you've been with us. Sure. I've been with Sheboygan County for almost four years. I started out as assistant planning director. I was here for one year, and then upon um, a vacancy that was created for the planning director, I decided to, after some soul searching, decided to, to apply for the job. Um, I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, both in geography. I tell people geography is where it's at. It's um, all encompassing, and I continually meet more and more geographers. It's kind of exciting. and. Um, I've worked for the Department of Natural Resources, I've worked for the federal government, the EPA, and um, now I'm here in, in Sheboygan County and I actually really enjoy it here. I think it's a great community to be in. So what do you see as the, the primary mission of the Planning and Resources Department? Probably the primary mission um, ultimately is to protect the natural resources as a whole. Um, and, and in order to do that, there are a number of different things that have to happen. Um, such as regulating land divisions to make sure that that occurs in an orderly fashion. Um, and then also with the septic systems, making sure that our drinking water and groundwater stays clean. And with the shoreland zoning, making sure that the structural setbacks and everything else, the lot coverage doesn't damage the water resource and it maintains an aesthetically pleasing environment for people who are we look at from the water and from the lake. I mean, we want to make it nice for the people who have property on the lake, but we also want to make it nice for people who are out on the lake fishing or canoeing or whatever. So I would say if there was one core um, function, that would be it. We oversee the Sheboygan Marsh. Um, we have a total of five public boat landings that we oversee and um, the recreation trail. And so, you know, I guess if you had to have a little theme or a sentence to try to sum it up. It's make, trying to make um, Sheboygan County a, a healthy place to live, work, and play. I mean, that's our ultimate goal. And um, healthy can mean recreation. It can be uh, emotional or physical with hunting or fishing or the, those sorts of things. And it's also the actual clean, you know, cleanliness of the environment. Um, and then real property is kind of a little bit of an aside. The tie-in is with the land information and how that's all based and the work that we do with the land division reviews ties in with that. And in the past, the link has been um, computer mapping and things like that. So even though they're not part of that protecting the environment theme that runs through the overall department, they definitely have a tie-in with maintaining the land-based records that we have in the county. Oh, you mentioned you have a total of 12 staff. Right. And I know uh, they encompass a lot of responsibilities, right. as you mentioned, county code administrators, uh, planning responsibilities. You, you work with other municipalities, and you're protecting the resources from uh, boat landings to, again, where septic systems are located. Right. And often people, I think, don't realize that the real property listing office is part of your department. Right. Please share a little bit more about their roles and responsibilities. Sure. Well, you know, one of the things that we really talk about is that if it wasn't for real property listing, government couldn't function because we wouldn't have the tax bill prepared and we wouldn't be able to collect the money that we levy. Um, anytime a transfer of property occurs in the unincorporated, we do not list for the city of Sheboygan. They have their own assessment process and their own assessor. 
um, but we list for every other community in the county. When that document comes in, if I were to sell you my house, let's say, and we live in the town of Sheboygan, my staff would process the document to put it from me to you for the tax bill purposes. There isn't any kind of automatic. The bank does their thing with the mortgages and things like that, and it's recorded with the register of deeds. But somewhere along the line that has to actually, the data needs to be entered to transfer the property. If a new subdivision is platted from um, a farm field or a vacant lot, uh, real property listing is responsible for entering in that, that split of the property, getting new tax key numbers for it, so the assessor can do their job and assign an, assign an assessment to that property. So not only do we deal with the straight transfers, we deal with the, excuse me, the the land divisions as well and ultimately our role is to support the assessors to prepare a role for them to work from to go through the assessment process make sure it's done in a timely manner so that the local governments can have their board of review and set their budget and and do all of those things so really they need to work closely with the local units of government the department of revenue the state of wisconsin um, gets involved too because there's constantly data that we're sending to them as well so there's a lot of different facets of of getting that done and it's it, kind of amazing sometimes when you see all of the different things that have to go into that but you know final question before turning it over to the chairman one of the initiatives I know you've been a big part of is increasing our capacity with GIS and mapping and mm -hmm. and in fact your department works closely with the sheriff's department right. so they know how to most quickly respond to, to folks touch on that just a little bit what what's happening with uh, GIS and mapping in your sure. department well, up until this point, most of the work that's been done with, with GIS is data development, trying to get the data prepared so that it can be used. The power of GIS, or Geographic Information Systems, or Geographic Information Science, sometimes people call it, they interchange it, um, is the application, the ability to do analysis on the ground. And so now we're going through this planning process with um, our Land Information Committee to update, moving from a data development phase to an applications phase. And we've been working with the Sheriff's Department, Health and Human Services. We've now brought into the loop, and I'll be doing a presentation with some of their key managers next week on how I think GIS can help them with what they do. For example, we could use some um, readily available U.S. Census data to identify housing units built before 1950, and then they can decide to target those neighborhoods for lead abatement. Um, if there was ever an outbreak, for um, tuberculosis, an active case of tuberculosis. They could pinpoint that on the dot. They could put a buffer you know, on the map, put a buffer around that spot and say, we need to contact all of the people around this area because they may have been exposed to tuberculosis. So there's a lot of different things that they could do. We need to get the users or the people that can use that information um, familiar with it because it's always been you know, planning and land records and geography based. but as the whole the whole purpose in GIS is for analysis and and now we need to take it to that next step with um, the sheriff's department we're trying even I mean not to it's amazing we never had a map before really of all of the jurisdictional boundaries of the the first responders and our office has been working very closely with the fire departments and ambulance companies and things and we we're finding there were places where there are actually gaps on the ground where if somebody had called 911 in that area, they, um, the dispatcher certainly would have been able to figure out who to send, but it wouldn't have been a quick pop up. So we've been going through and without that map, when you actually, it's very difficult to, to see that. And so um, I think that we've been having a really good relationship with, with the Sheriff's Department for sure. And they're starting to really value a lot of the things. And we've even had the DA come over a couple of times and. Um, have us put together some aerial photograph um, poster size for trials that they had so they could show, you know, this guy was here or if there was a drug unit bust or a, a, an accident that they wanted the intersection. So um, it's pretty far reaching and, and the sky's the limit. There's a lot of really neat stuff out there that you can do with, with that tool. Excellent. Thank you. So, mm -hmm. okay. Shanna, let's go back to talking about the recreational uh, facilities that you oversee within the county. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that there are several. Could you give us a little advertisement for some sure. of them? What's available sure. throughout the county? Well, we have one of the most visible is the 14 mile Old Plank Road Trail, which you can take from Erie Avenue in the town, it's actually in the town of Sheboygan, all the way out to the Old Wade House now. We just completed a mile and a half extension 
um, from what we called the Greenbush Trailhead. If you're heading on Highway 23, it's where that log cabin was, and um, well, it still is. That's where it used to end, and now it goes another mile and a half to the west, and you can bicycle to the road that takes you into the, the old Wade House. With the Highway 23 expansion project, it is hoped that that trail will go all the way to Fond du Lac. We only have about three to four miles that we would need to complete to get it from the end of where it is now to the county line. Fond du Lac County has nothing at this point in time, but they're very interested in bringing that together, and they did some work on the Highway 151 bypass there that they found very really successful that they'd like to replicate here. So there's the Old Plank Road Trail. Um, there are some trailheads. There's one at the intersection of Meadowlark and Highway 23, and there's actually a boat landing there that you can, it's just a walk-in boat landing, you can't put a motorized craft in there, but if you're interested in canoeing um, the Sheboygan River, it's a really nice place to put in, um, and if you, you can actually drive along that segment, there's a small segment of the trail, probably about 500 feet with a cul-de-sac at the end, where you can park and load your canoe, and then go park up at the top of the parking lot. We have, um, Boat landings at Yetzer's Lake, Little Elkhart Lake, Elkhart Lake, and Crystal Lake. And then we also have one at Gerber Lake, which Gerber Lake is not just the, the lake, it's also a, uh, a hunting and fishing and wildlife area where people can um, do hunting out, out on that property. And um, so that, I think a lot of times people don't fully understand that that is available to them. Um, and then probably the most prominent, well, the most visual is the Old Plank Road Trail, but one you hear a lot about is the marsh. And um, we have, overall, there's about 14,000 acres that are all encompassed in the marsh. I want to say there's about 7,000 that are owned by the county. We recently got a new um, vendor in there about a year ago, three guys in a grill, and they are, they've been remarkable in um, running the restaurant, and they've come up with some really unique things some unique uh, dishes to have, and uh, they've been running the, the campground very well from what I understand, and we're, we're really quite pleased with the way that things are working. So if, if people haven't been out there, I would certainly encourage them to go take a look because um, I think that they're doing an excellent job. You can even, my big thing was as long as you can buy a t-shirt that says Sheboygan Marsh, it will be excited, and you can. Um, so that in a nutshell is what we have right now. Are there any plans for any additional facilities that might be coming online down the road? Well, right now we actually are working on a seven-mile extension of the interurban rail line. It is in our um, five-year capital plan to be constructed in 2006. And obviously, with budgets, there's a lot of things up in the air, but we're going to keep moving forward. We've formed an advisory committee, and we've been looking to Ozaki County, which has been very successful, and they have... You know, for example, they were able to successfully r fundraise for a pedestrian bridge to go over I-43. Mm -hmm. That will be constructed within the next year or so. That was a over $1 million project alone. And a big chunk of that was from the grassroots, the citizens in the, in the community really working together. So we've been tapping into their knowledge and expertise and helping us with the development of this trail. And we had um, some of the key players come up this last week, we're meeting once a month right now to try to get things really rolling and speak to us about their experience, what they've done, things they might do different. Um, and next week we're, or next month we'll have somebody from Ozaki County come up and talk about the economic impact of the trail that they've seen in Ozaki County so that we can get a better feel for, for what that might do for us. Um, excuse me. We, we hope to bring it from the Sheboygan County line through Cedar Grove and then ultimately into Oostburg. And with the growth that those communities, Cedar Grove and Oostburg, have seen recently, um, I think there's definitely a need. I think that there's a lot more families moving into those communities. I, I, I may be talking out of turn, but I believe Oostburg, for example, added an extra kindergarten class last year as a rumor that I had heard. And I think that's an indication of what is happening in those communities and I think that there's a lot of people that would like to see more opportunities for recreation down there. But at this point that's really the the only facility that we're working on. Um, the resources committee which oversees my department would like to see a observation tower out at the marsh and um, so we're working on that and we're working with an architect to try to come up with some conceptual drawings for some other um, multi-use type of things out there but that's 
preliminary, but there's a, a big, strong goal to get that observation tower um, moving forward. And there's talks about um, fundraising potential and, and donations that, that could help fund that. And I think, I think that's a reality. Okay. The county implemented a stewardship fund a number of years ago. How has that worked? What projects have been, been funded? Can you talk a little sure. bit about it? There have been quite a few, um, and they've been mixed. The first year, I think, it was it was kind of um, people getting used to it and learning, and a lot of the projects that were done were in the urban areas. The city of Sheboygan received twenty thousand dollars to help with their the promenade or the walkway along the river associated with the South Pier. Um, the village of Elkhart Lake received some money for a nature trail, and that's done. Um, the city of Plymouth received another twenty thousand dollars in that first year to they were moving a, uh, removing a dam in one of their parks and they were doing a restoration project with that and all three of those projects turned out really well. Um, the next year we had the town of town of Rhine and initially their dollars were for an acquisition project and um, when they first did the application, I was looking at some of the site conditions and thought that there were some really great opportunities for a wetland restoration project and ultimately that's what they ended up doing and it's turned out to be a really beautiful project. I don't know if you've had a chance to take a look at it but they worked very closely with the County Land and Water Conservation Department and um, had did a wetland scrape is what we call it when we take some of the topsoil off and, and get the water flowing in there. Um, some prairie plantings, some shrub plantings and it's really turned out nice. So some of the funding um, went to that and then that same year Trout Unlimited received ten thousand dollars to put in um, lunker structures they're called their habitat for trout in three different areas along the Onion River and then the next year the Sheboygan County Conservation Association received I believe about six thousand dollars to assist with the acquisition of a ten acre piece in the marsh um, and the other half of their funds came from state stewardship dollars so that was really a good a good match of how those funds worked out. The village of Howard's Grove, which is another village in our county that's growing very quickly and has a lot of families, um, they're doing a wetland restoration on um, a new park that they're developing. So there were some funds for that, and I'm I'm sure I'm probably oh the city of Sheboygan Falls, um, they're dra dredging out their lagoon, and as part of that they are putting in a wheelchair accessible fishing pier. So. Those are things that have happened to date. There was an emergency fund request made by um, the Department of Natural Resources for some money for an acquisition um, for, it's really in conjunction with um, the Onion River and the trout streams. The conservation, so the, the Land and Water Conservation Department received money for buffers in that area as well. So we have all these different projects in the Onion River um, dealing with the trout streams in this acquisition. Ultimately, I think they're asking for about $12,500 out of a total project cost of about $450,000. So, you know, the county, if it wasn't for the county and the Sheboygan County Conservation Association stepping up in the last um, final hour, I guess, if you will, the, the whole project probably would have failed. It probably would not have happened because they couldn't get any additional dollars from the state. But because, you know, we worked together and, and made this happen. It is going to happen and it's right along the line with a lot of the work that we've been trying to do over time. So I think that that was a really positive thing that happened. And I think that there have been, now that more people are aware of what's out there and what the fund can be done with and we've tweaked the application process and everything, I think that it's really starting to fall in line. So. Really, the same thing happened with the uh, the Gerber Lake project. Mm -hmm. I, I, were you chairman at that time, Bill? Mm -hmm. I know you were on the executive committee and. At that time, we had, we had the opportunity to save one of the last lakes in the county, if not in the area, that when you're on the lake, you see no development around you. And between the Department of Natural Resources and the Conservation Association in Sheboygan County, stepping up and leveraging scarce resources, we were able to protect that right. property forever. And as you mentioned earlier in the segment, if folks haven't been out there, I sure encourage them to do so because it's a, it's a little jewel in the yeah. county that gives you a, almost a feel as though you're in Canada. Mm -hmm. So the stewardship fund now has provided a planned opportunities right. to, to take take benefit of leveraging funds and doing good things for the community. So you've done a great job. Yeah. Thanks. Now is the stewardship fund also has helped with smart growth in communities, hasn't it? Right. What have um, we been doing in that area? Early, early in the process, 
uh, there was this, the stewardship ad hoc committee that was formed, and one of the things that was raised is that not a lot of the communities in the county had a plan. So if a project was being brought forward, how would we know whether or not it was worthwhile for funding? And, and you know, we really should have a direction to know that a community has thought out this project and that it's something that they're working toward. So the thought was that a portion of the stewardship money would be spent to grants for local communities for smart growth planning assistance. And I think that um, as some of the things that plans are starting to come forward, you know, some of the communities are in some early visioning stages and things like that, but when we've had um, these projects come forward, we can say, oh yeah, the, the residents of this community have said at a rate of 80% of the residents that this is really important to them and so this is a good fit. Or, you know, if they've said, we don't need any more of that at all, well, you know, I don't know, should Sheboygan County be a part of, of helping with funding if the people don't find it important? Or if there's a list of priorities, maybe we can only fund five out of eight, those that are part of a plan can help um, be funded. We can, we can decide that as criteria. So, and I think that if it wasn't for that, a lot of communities would still be kind of, you know, I know everybody want, knows they have to do it, and um, I think that it helps them be a little more comfortable with moving forward and, and feeling like they can do it. And I think that um, whereas maybe four years ago, most people were saying, well, we'll just wait till 2009, because the state law requires that you need to have the plan in place by 2010. Um, there's probably only three or four communities in this county that I have not had um, active dialogue with regarding smart growth. The rest of them um, been meeting with them periodically and some of them more frequently than others but all of them I've had good dialogue back and forth with so um, I think that it's really there are some things that are happening in this county that I would have never thought would happen before. For example one, one that you're familiar with is a partnership between um, the village of Adele, the village of Random Lake and the town of Sherman where they're all sitting around the table talking to each other we have a similar situation in an area that I call Lake Country. It's um, three towns and two villages in the northwest corner of the county. And another one, another partnership north of here, um, town of Mosul, town of Herman, and village of Howard's Grove. Those communities are actually, every month, we sit down at a table and we talk about, this is what's important to my community, or that's what's important to your community. And we start to hash out some of the issues and come to a better understanding in one community, for example, open space is valued from an aesthetic resource, and in another one, it's only valued from a farming resource. But they can talk to each other and understand and begin to respect that a little bit more, whereas in the past, there would just be this friction and um, anger sometimes between those two groups. And it's, it's a little bit easier when the face is familiar that you don't agree with. It. And so I think that it's really made a, a, a positive difference and I, I think that people are really working together where before they didn't, I think they always kind of knew that it was a good idea but they didn't really even know how to start. Here's another example, Town of Linden and Town of Mitchell. One of the things that came out of this was that they now send notices if there's a rezoning request to their neighbors across the border where they weren't doing that before. But obviously something that if the town of Linden does it right on that border, it could affect somebody in the town of Mitchell, but now they're having a dialogue. So I think that, um, though somewhat controversial, I think that in the end it's, it's better for everybody, not just in each of the communities, but if all the communities are planning, it's best for the county as a whole. So I think it's working mm -hmm. good. And even though your department has an awful lot on your plate, you've taken a personal interest in helping several of the communities. Yeah, <coughs> Excuse I think, me, and I think that's really great. I think it's important and I think it's fun, <laughs> so, um, and it, yeah, it's good. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, we've already covered a lot of ground and one of the things that can sometimes not be a lot of fun in your department is you have very capable, good staff who often have to put the black hat on, uh, the Land and Water Conservation Department, for example, or the Extension, UW Extension. Uh, they often have the white cap on and they're working with folks and providing information and it's more of a voluntary situation where some of your staff, obviously yourself included as the director, need to enforce codes, need to enforce zoning laws that the, the county board or the state has mandated. Uh, 
Very briefly, and we only have a few minutes, right. talk a little bit about that challenge, uh, what your staff have to do in regards to septic system location or when it comes to development along the lake or river. Right. Well, as far as the septic systems go, um, anybody who lives in the country or on a septic system will have to deal with our department at some point in time. Whether it's up front in the beginning, if you have a vacant lot and you have your soil test done and your installer is putting in the system, our staff are out there making sure that the installer meets the state plumbing code for that to make sure that that system doesn't back up into your house or no corners were cut and, you know, from time to time, it, the staff do find things, but everybody works together and get it done. I mean, ultimately want to make sure that the system is functioning and you as a landowner have, have a place to put the stuff that you um, use in your house. The other time that you might deal with us is if you have a discharge to the surface, whether it be a drainage ditch or a river or whatever, we respond to complaints. Um, a lot of times, I'll be honest with you, what we see is two neighbors are mad at each other and then this one calls and says, I can see it flowing down the ditch and then that, you know, and, but once we get a complaint, what we'll do is um, contact the landowner. We'll try to find an outfall at first. If we can't, we'll ask to dye test the system. We put um, some dye down the sinks and the toilets and things and we wait a couple days to see if it shows up. And sometimes even when we suspect it's discharging someplace that's not supposed to, you don't find it, you can't see it, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. If there's bright green water running through a, a drainage ditch one, one day, then we can start, a, we'll issue an order. And we always try to work with people in a reasonable time frame. Um, if an order is issued to replace a system or update a system, um, you know, we don't give you one month if it's December, because obviously you can't do much. We try to look at that. Um, if you live on a, on a lake, you need a permit. If you live within 300 feet of a river or 1,000 feet of a lake, you need a permit from us. And there's a number of different criteria. And if I had any advice for anybody um, buying land on the lake is come to our office and ask the questions. Because a lot of times we see people buying property with the assumption that, oh, I can just tear this down or I can add on here. And then they've spent $300,000, $400,000 sometimes to find out that they're stuck with this property and now they're mad, which I can fully understand, but that makes things difficult. And um, if you build something without a permit and we couldn't issue a permit for it, you will remove it. Um, people sometimes have this opinion that, well, I'll just pay the, I'll build it and pay the fine. And that's not the way it works. We do issue orders for removal and we've, we've been to court before on it. So it's always best to, to just do everything on the up and up, get your permits and ask the questions beforehand. And though, again, it may not always be pleasant for your staff or the people interacting with your staff. The earlier they contact your office, the better. And the bottom line is you're seeking to protect the resource, whether it's water right. quality or the interests of the individual looking right. to build that house right. or put that septic system in. Absolutely. Well, Shannon, we covered a lot of ground <laughs> yeah. and time went quickly. And I hope our viewers in this brief snapshot got a, got a picture of just the energy and vitality you've brought to the department. I know you've only been with the county about four years or so, years. but mm -hmm. uh, Bill Gehring and I both appreciate the work that you and your staff do, and uh, we're very appreciative of the good things that are happening in the community as a result of your department. Thank you. If you have questions, don't hesitate to contact Shannon Hayden or her staff at the Planning and Resources Department in the County Administration Building. They're always uh, looking to help you and until next time on behalf of chairman bill gehring and myself adam payne thank you for joining us next month we'll have the child support director jim groff here again thank you for joining us